New video is out on JJ9 News, where we talk all things NFL all the time. The latest video involves Isaiah Rogers getting suspended one year for gambling and defending himself by saying that it wasn't him who made those bets. Make sure to check the link in the description to check out that channel now. And now, on with our feature presentation. When people talk about the greatest broadcasters in NFL history, oftentimes, they'll mention this man right here, Don Meredith. As much of a legend as he was on the field as the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys in the 1960s, he was even more of a legend calling games on Monday Night Football, as he helped make that program what it is with his signature personality and his catchphrases. There were a lot of absolutely terrible broadcasters in the 70s who got facts blatantly wrong and had bias towards certain teams that they didn't even try to hide. Heck, I've done videos on such broadcasters before, so if you want to learn more about one man in particular, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Meredith was not one of them. He was a breath of fresh air, and he was a fantastic broadcaster who embodied the spirit of 1970s football and was the voice of many people's childhood. He had a lot of great moments up in the broadcasting booth. But this was not one of them. Meredith got the opportunity to call three Super Bowls in his life, calling Super Bowl 19 with ABC, and calling Super Bowl 9 and Super Bowl 11 with NBC. And when you're calling the Super Bowl, everything is amplified by a million. You really have to be on your game. You cannot afford to screw up and get the basic facts wrong about certain situations. And Dandy Don was not so dandy here, I'll put it like that. Imagine if the Detroit Lions made the Super Bowl this year, and Tony Romo said, that tight end Sam Laporta was not the Lions' top tight end going into the game, as he had to replace the injured TJ Hawkinson. Obviously, nothing about that statement is true. The timeline is all off, Hawkinson isn't on the team anymore, and Hawkinson isn't even injured. We'd all criticize and lambast Tony Romo for saying that, and rightfully so. Well, at Super Bowl XI, Don Meredith made a similar mistake with Oakland Raiders kicker Errol Mann. And let's just say that viewers and listeners all across the country were absolutely confused when Meredith said something that didn't seem to make any sense whatsoever if you paid even the slightest iota of attention to Oakland. Because this is the story behind what might just be, considering the circumstances, the dumbest announcer moment at any Super Bowl. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand how the Oakland Raiders got to this point in particular, and the kicker in question that was impacted by this. It's January 9th, 1977, and we find ourselves at the Rose Bowl for the first time in Super Bowl history, as we've got a battle between the Oakland Raiders out of the AFC and the Minnesota Vikings out of the NFC. For one of these teams, they're about to make history, not just because they'll win the Vince Lombardi Trophy and be called world champions, but because the winner of this game will win their first Super Bowl in franchise history. The Raiders, as in this team right here and the main team in our story, made it nearly a decade before, as they fell to the Green Bay Packers at Super Bowl II. But this year, after years of falling just short, they've established themselves as one of the best teams in football. Outside of a 48-17 drubbing in Week 4 at the hands of the New England Patriots, this is a Raiders team that had been near flawless all season. They were 13-1 in the regular season, setting a franchise record for most wins in a season, and becoming just the second team in the post-merger era to finish a season with less than two losses, joining the 1972 Dolphins in that category. They entered the Super Bowl on a 12-game winning streak, including a dominant three-possession win in the AFC Championship against their arch-rival, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this was a Raider team that had talent galore. You had the incomparable play of future Hall of Fame quarterback Ken Stabler, who was named a Pro Bowler and was the runner-up for AP Offensive Player of the Year after leading the league by completing 67% of his passes, throwing for 27 touchdowns, and posting a passer rating of 103.4. A great rating by today's standards, but an almost unthinkable thing back in 1976, when defenses could do whatever they wanted to. As a side note, to learn more about Ken Stabler, click the card in the upper right corner. You had the great running of fullback Mark Van Egan, who had over a thousand yards rushing. You can learn more about his career by clicking the card in the upper right corner. By the time all was said and done, 
more than half of the starters on Oakland's offense would wind up in the Hall of Fame. As alongside Stabler, you had wide receivers Fred Belitnikoff and Cliff Branch, tight end Dave Casper, and offensive linemen Art Shell and Gene Upshaw. And if things didn't work out offensively, not only did you have the greatest punter of all time in Ray Guy who could flip the field, but you had a defense that was firing at all cylinders entering this game, allowing just 11.5 points per game over their most recent seven games. When you go 13-1 in the regular season, and 15-1 if you combine the playoff record, there aren't going to be a ton of weaknesses on your team. However, if there was one weakness, and this Raider team had one major Achilles heel, it was that kicker, and it was with this man right here, Errol Mann. Hall of Famer George Blanda had been the team's kicker since 1967, so for nine years, Blanda was kicking for the Raiders, and even playing a little bit of quarterback here and there. But after the 1975 season, his time in the NFL was done, as he had become somewhat of a liability. Blanda went 0 for 5 on kicks in 1975 from 40 plus yards out, making the Raiders the only team to not make a field goal that year from the 40 plus yard range, despite their best efforts. And it's not really a surprise that Blanda's leg wasn't as good anymore and seemed to be getting weaker. The man was 48 years old. He was 49 in 1976. He had been playing since the merger. And I don't mean the AFL-NFL merger. I mean the NFL-AAFC merger. Entering the 1976 season, the Raiders felt that it was time to go in a separate direction. Even though Blanda felt that he could still play, and was a bit bitter about the move, that was the end of Blanda's NFL career. And after things didn't work out with their fifth round kicker, Fred Steinfurt, who was a mix of injured and terrible, as he wouldn't be on the team after the 1976 season, after hitting just 50% of his kicks over the first half of the year and missing three extra points, the Raiders brought on the man that you've been watching this whole time, Errol Mann. For a long time, Mann had been a very solid kicker in the league. From 1969 to 75, he played with the Detroit Lions and was one of the top, most accurate, and most reliable kickers in football. From 1969 to 71 with Detroit, he made 104 out of a possible 104 extra points. Granted, this was when the extra point was at the two-yard line, but still, that's impressive for the early 70s. In four of his first six seasons with Detroit, he finished inside the top four of the league in field goal percentage, including a 1969 campaign when his percentage of 67.6% ranked second only behind Fred Cox of the Minnesota Vikings. In fact, Mann was one of just three kickers in the league that year to be above 60%. Over those seven seasons, you were looking at a man who hit on over 67% of his field goals, at a time when a lot of teams struggled to find a kicker that even hit 50%. But in 1976, the man who led the Lions at the time in points scored completely fell off a cliff. He was released midway through the season after hitting on just 40% of his field goals through the first six games, going 4 for 10, and after missing a kick in every single game, including a critical field goal in a one-point loss to the Minnesota Vikings. And for the Raiders, who needed a kicker after Fred Steinfurt stunk to start the year off and got hurt, they decided to take a chance on Mann. Mann was not exactly the answer to their problems. During the regular season with the Raiders, he went just 4 for 11, hitting 36.4% of his kicks. And it's even worse than that, because he was 2 for 2 to start off his time in Oakland. So this means that over his final 6 games of the regular season, he was 2 for 11, coming out to a percentage of 22%, which is bad for any era of football, especially the mid-70s. Still, Mann was the kicker that the Raiders were going to ride with entering the Super Bowl having cut Blanda for being bad, and not for health-related reasons, and not having anyone else to turn to due to Fred Steinfurt being a disappointment who would have been cut if not for his injury, Mann was the weakest link in an otherwise strong team. So before going any further, let's just make that clear. George Blanda was watching Super Bowl XI from his couch. Errol Mann was not brought on as an injury replacement to Blanda, because Blanda was not on the team. Saying that Errol Mann was brought on because George Blanda had an injury is like if, at Super Bowl 58, Patrick Mahomes gets hurt, Wayne Gabbert enters the game, 
and Tony Romo says that Gabbert was brought onto the team after backup quarterback Chad Henney got injured. No, that's not how it works. Henney was no longer on the team. He had retired, and Gabbert took over the backup job. Saying that Errol Mann was brought on because George Blanda had an injury is like if, at Super Bowl 58, Brock Purdy gets hurt. Sam Darnold enters the game, and Tony Romo says that Darnold was brought onto the team after backup quarterback Trey Lance got injured. That's not at all what happened. That is a complete butchering of the facts. That is complete misinformation. Keep all of that in mind. You know the story here. Because Don Meredith very clearly did not. And with that, here's the situation. The Raiders, after getting the ball to start the game, drive down to the red zone. And after picking up two yards on third and 11, are faced with fourth and nine at the 11 yard line. This sets up a 29 yard try for Errol Mann. Should be a chip shot. It's inside 30 yards. And every kicker in football, even back in 1976, can be realistically expected to hit a kick like this. Instead, it goes off the left post. No good. The game is still scoreless, and the Raiders walk away from this drive empty handed. And that's when Don Meredith, deciding to hammer home the point that man has not had a great season, said this. It's just the fact that he was not their kicker coming in. We know they replaced George Blanda this year, had an injury. Let's take another look at it. Wait a second, wait a second, time out. He was not their kicker coming in? He replaced George Blanda, who had an injury? Did you, uh, did you follow the Raiders for a single second this year? Don Meredith, I know you're a legend in the broadcasting world, and I love you, man, but seriously? And before I go any further, and it seems like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, I was not the only one to catch this, because newspapers all across the country caught this insane error by Dandy Don, saying that Meredith blew the statement and got everything wrong. This is not a me issue. And this is not me looking at something through a 2024 lens. No, this was a massive mistake across publications at the time of this game in 1977. Mann had been the team's kicker since the second half of the season. In fact, for the vast majority of the year, he had been the team's kicker. He was absolutely their kicker coming in. It's not as though the man was brought in for this game, or was brought in for just a few games. He had been there for a while. Also, he did not replace an injured George Blanda. Blanda was off the team because he wasn't very good, wasn't very accurate, and had no leg strength. Blanda was not injured. Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Nick Foles, at Super Bowl 52, replaced an injured Carson Wentz. Indianapolis Colts kicker Matt Stover, at Super Bowl 44, replaced an injured Adam Vinatieri. New York Giants quarterback Jeff Hostetler, at Super Bowl 25, replaced an injured Phil Sims. That's how this works. What injury did Blanda suffer? Old age? Like this isn't even the slightest bit accurate. How can you not be the kicker coming in and be replacing a guy due to injury when that guy, number one, isn't on the roster, number two, hasn't been on the roster all season, and number three, isn't even hurt? And NBC got enough backlash and complaints from this that later in the game, Play-by-play -play man Kurt Gowdy had to issue a correction. Because later in the game, when Mann lined up for an extra point, Gowdy said this. And Fred uh, Steinfurt was a regular kicker, and he hurt his knee. See, now that's the accurate statement. He didn't replace George Blanda. He replaced Fred Steinfurt. Blanda was not even remotely in the equation. Mann and Blanda's time on the team never once intersected or overlapped. Gowdy issued the correction for Meredith's earlier misinformation that confused the viewing audience of 62 million viewers. But by that point, considering how much of a bloodbath this game was, it might have been too late. Seeing as people might have flipped off their television sets due to the outcome of the game not being in any doubt. Despite that horrible 1976 season, and despite that atrocious outing at the Super Bowl, Errol Mann would stay on the Raiders for another two years after that, and would actually bounce back incredibly well. Seriously, in 1977, he went from one of the worst kickers in football to one of the best again. He made over 71% of his field goals and made over 50% of his kicks from the 40 plus yard range, which was incredibly impressive considering what happened the previous year. During that 1977 season, Mann led the NFL in points scored and was fourth in the league in field goal percentage. 
Errol Mann had quite the bounce back. He doubled his field goal percentage from 1976 to 77. So good for him on that. But when it came to Super Bowl XI, not so much. Maybe George Blanda could have done better. I don't know. Look, Don Meredith is one of the greatest and most iconic announcers of all time. But I think it's safe to say that this was not his finest moment and was a pretty big gaff. This wasn't a simple misspeak. This was a factually incorrect statement in front of over 60 million people that went unchecked for the vast majority of the broadcast until it was too late. This was a mistake that was caught by many people and a mistake so bad that Kurt Gowdy had to issue a correction afterwards. To say that Errol Man replaced an injured George Blanda has as much validity as saying that this season, for the Indianapolis Colts, Gardner Minshew replaced an injured Matt Ryan, or saying that this season, for the Las Vegas Raiders, Aiden O'Connell replaced an injured Derek Carr. It's the same concept. This Super Bowl was a not-so-super time to make a super blunder, because at Super Bowl XI, when it came to Don Meredith, he made a giant error with Errol Mann. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.